Hello and welcome back. In this video, I want to continue talking about uniform circular motion and centripetal acceleration, and I want to consider a few specific examples. The first example I want to look at is the example of an object traveling in a circular orbit around a planet. Now, when an object is in a circular orbit, the speed that this object is moving at is always the same. So this this motion will be a uniform circular motion. Additionally, if we look at this free body diagram down here, we can see that the only force that is exerted on a satellite that is orbiting a planet is this gravitational force. And for example, when the satellite is, say, over here in its path, the gravitational force will point towards the planet. And what this means is that the gravitational force is always pointing inwards towards the center of its circular path. So right away, we can say that this gravitational force is supplying the centripetal acceleration for the satellite as it moves in a uniform circular path. So this gravitational force has to be equal to mv squared over r. And the question I want to consider is how fast does a satellite need to be traveling in order to undergo a, a circular orbit? So in the previous slide, we said that the gravitational force has to equal mv squared over r. Now because the satellite is so far away from the center of this planet, we'll have to use the universal formula for gravitational force. So we have that the gravitational force has to equal mv squared over r. The universal formula for gravity is that this is equal to g times the mass of the planet times the mass of the satellite divided by the square of the distance. And remember, this distance here is the distance between the center of the planet and the position of the satellite. And we said this has to equal mv squared over r. Right away, we can see that the mass of the satellite cancels. We can also see that one of these r's will cancel. Notice that these two r's are the same distance, right? This is the distance between the center of the Earth and the uh, satellite. And this r here is the distance between the center of the circular path and the satellite. But because the Earth or the planet is at the center of the circular path, these two distances will be the same. So we can cancel one of these r's with one of these. And this gives us v squared is equal to gm over r. Finally, if I take the square root, I can see that the speed that the uh, satellite has to be moving at is equal to the square root of gm over r. Now I want to look at uh, another example, and this is, uh, this is, I think the easiest way to understand this is, uh, think if you've ever been to a uh, carnival or an amusement park or something like this, and they have these rides, it's a cylinder, and people go into this ride and the inside of the cylinder and they stand against the wall of the cylinder, and then the cylinder spins around really, really fast, and the people who are on this ride they get stuck to the walls of the cylinder, right? And so you can like do all sorts of funny things like the ground usually that you're standing on at the beginning will kind of lower itself down and you'll just be stuck there against the wall because you're spinning around very fast. So this exact same kind of idea can be used to simulate gravity in space. So for example, if I have this uh, cylindrical uh, space station and this cylindrical space station is spinning around at some velocity like this, then a person inside the space station will feel as if there's a gravitational force pushing them down. So this is called artificial gravity. Now, I wanna make a few things clear about this. It, as you can see here in this figure, if I draw a free body diagram of this person, the only force that is being exerted on this person is the normal force that the floor of the space station is applying on this person, right? Because I know if this person is traveling in uniform circular motion along with the space station as it's rotating around like this, I know that the net force that is acting on this astronaut in here has to point inwards towards the center of the space station. So this means that the only force that is acting on this astronaut is this normal force that the floor of the uh, space station is pushing upwards on this astronaut. Okay. Now this astronaut will feel as though there's gravitational force pushing down on them, 
But remember, I've talked about this before when we talked about apparent weight. You don't actually feel the gravitational force pushing down on you. For example, if you're in an elevator and the elevator cable suddenly, you know, breaks and you're falling towards the ground, during that time you'll feel weightless as you fall to the ground. But obviously the gravitational force is still being exerted on you. Uh, here, there's this person, he's in space, there's no gravitational force, but the floor is pushing upwards on this person. So it feels as if there's a gravitational force pushing down on him, but really all this person feels is the normal force of the uh, floor of the space station pushing up against him. And it's that normal force that is creating the centripetal acceleration that allows this person to travel around in a circle along with the rest of the space station. This fictitious force that a person feels when they're in a, a rotating frame like this is called the centrifugal force. So this is a fictitious force that this person feels like is pushing them down. This is a fictitious force. Remember that these types of fictitious forces occur when a person is in a non-inertial reference frame. Obviously, this person right here is in a reference frame that's accelerating because his reference frame is moving around in a circle. So this reference frame is a non-inertial reference frame. And remember that in non-inertial reference frames, there are these fictitious forces that arise. So this fake artificial gravitational force that's pushing down on this person is actually a fictitious force that occurs because the person in here is in a non-inertial reference frame. And that fictitious force is called the centrifugal force. Now, at this point, I think I'd like to end the video. And in the next lecture, I want to talk about what happens if we have circular motion in like a vertical circular motion, like a uh, roller coaster going around a loop where we have gravity that's also going to affect the object.